<laughs> Thank you for joining us today. It's official at the University of Colorado Boulder. We're ready for prime time. What do you say? I want to start by saying on behalf of Congressman Joe Nagoose, our CU System President, Todd Solomon, members of the Board of Regents and region elects, all of whom are here with us today, I'm thrilled to welcome Dion, Coach Prime Sanders, to the University of Colorado as our 25th full-time head football coach. You know, a figure of Dion's stature truly needs no introduction. But in, in addition to his impressive career, first as a player and most recently as a coach, I'm struck by his ability to connect with his student athletes and lead them to success on the field and off. In addition to his 27-5 record at Jackson State, Coach led the team to a 90% graduation success rate, proving his ability to not only build great teams, but also young men. And I'm thankful that he decided to join us, and I'm confident he will elevate our program and our university in ways we've never experienced before. I'm also very thankful for our athletic director, Rick George, who worked tirelessly to conduct a nationwide search. Yeah. <laughs> for a nationwide search for a coach who would return our football program to prominence while also fitting in with the culture and values that make CU Boulder so special. Rick set out to make a transcendent, transformational hire, and he succeeded. Any endeavor this big takes a team, and I'm excited to announce that from the administration standpoint, we're working to give Coach and all of his student athletes the tools they need to succeed. In conjunction with our faculty partners, we're updating some of our transfer credit review processes with a program <laughs> with a program that seeks to enhance across for all prospective transfer students, students and student athletes, providing expedited assessment of transferability of academic credits from other institutions to be accepted at CU Boulder. This not only promises to benefit student athletes but also Colorado residents who decided to go to another university but want to come back to Boulder to finish their degree. This new initiative combined with the NIL Collective and our existing resources for student athletes, which I feel are among the best in the country, will set our football program up for long-term success both on and off the field. Finally, I'd like to thank our current football student athletes who endured an immensely challenging season but always represented themselves in the university with incredible poise. They remain among CU Boulder's best ambassadors, and we're excited to support their success moving forward. As I've said many times before, a successful football program raises the profile of the university as a whole, evaluating the visibility of all of our achievements. And I know that Coach Sanders will raise CU Boulder to new heights and I look forward to supporting Coach and our team next year and beyond. And now I'd like to turn it over to our athletic director, the person who got this all done, Rick George. Yeah! It's prime time! When I walked into the committee room in Dallas yesterday, Coach uh, Ward Manuel from Michigan, every time I come in, he'd say, prime time! <laughs> and it's prime time. Uh, so uh, thanks, Chancellor, and uh, thanks, everyone, for being here. Uh, I do want to start off uh, with a few thank yous. Stand up. <laughs> it's emotional. I haven't, I've been gone for two months, so. Um, it's all about emotion, and um, she's been great. Our Board of Regents, I, I know I saw Leslie Smith over here and the rest of our Regents, uh, they're awesome. Um, and, and they've done an incredible job of supporting us through this process. President Solomon, I know he's here somewhere. I saw him when we came in. Um, 
I think we all talk about, you know, um, when we're the best is when we're aligned at the top. And that's really important for us. And to have our regents here, our president and our chancellor taking part in this uh, is, is really important. But to have their support, most importantly, is, is what's going to make a difference here. Um, also want to thank Aero Electronics for their ongoing support of our student athletes. And one person most of you don't know is uh, my chief of staff, Alec Russos. Uh, but through this process, um, he and uh, Coach Ray and, and Coach Prime's team have, have worked closely together to bring all this. And Jason DePape, our deputy, and my executive team and our staff, they're just incredible people that have done an amazing job uh, to keep this on track while, while we've been gone over the last two months. And finally, I want to thank Mike Sanford. Uh, Mike has done an incredible job. There he is right there. I want to thank him for his leadership um, during a real difficult time. Um, and, and as the chancellor said, most importantly, I want to thank our football student athletes for their perseverance and commitment to each other in our football program. I think we all know it's been a real challenging year, maybe a year and a half uh, for our football program, including our fans, alums, our staff, uh, those that are closely associated with us. But today's a new day. This is when we focus on what's ahead and the bright future that's ahead of us and coming together for a common purpose and that's to bring this program back to national prominence that's what we have to do it starts today it starts with everybody in this room and it uh, starts with buff nation it's time for everybody to come together regardless of how you felt the last 12 months or 18 months it's a new day today everybody said let's go all in it's time to go all in And we need your support. We need Buff Nation support. We need you to get involved in the collective. We need you to support the Buff Club. We need to sell out and we need a Nebraska game to be all black and gold, no red. <laughs> Coach Prime's first home game is against Nebraska. And we're gonna give him a Colorado Buffalo welcome with black and gold. So we expect everybody to, to come up and show up. Don't sell your tickets because we know who you are, and um, that's not going to work. But um, I just want to go back to when this uh, process started on October 2nd, um, when we made a change, and we said that we were going to go out and uh, find the best coach in America to lead this program. This fall is going to be the 100th anniversary of football being played in Folsom Field, 100th year. And the first home game, as I said, is going to be against Nebraska in our 100th season. And we've got a gentleman that's going to lead us into that season. And I want to tell you what I know about him in the short time that I've gotten to know him. He's confident. He knows what he wants and what his expectations are. He's a man of faith, a man of character, integrity, an incredible family man, and he's a leader of men, and he is going to be our 20, coach, uh, the chancellor said 25th, and maybe the 28th uh, head coach, 28th in our history, and it's time for Coach Prime and the prime time era, and it starts today, and so let me introduce our 28th coach in Colorado history, Coach Prime. Just trying to seize the moment. Wow. Don't you ever tell me what God ain't. Don't you ever tell me his limits. Don't you ever tell me what you're up against and what you can't do. And all the persons in the world, God chose me. For that, I thank you. 
For that I love him. For that I magnify him. For that I glorify him. For that I praise him. For that I owe him. Each and every day. I'm trying to please him. Congressman, university president, several elected board of regents, and I thank you, sir. And I thank you all for being here today. You have no idea the feelings that I have and the emotions that I have inside. Rick is a whole nother thing. <laughs> I met my match. Yeah, okay, clap it up for him. I met somebody that was profound, that was passionate, that was caring, that stood on morals, God-fearing man, devoted husband, understands the game, understands people, understands life, and he will not stop till he's accomplished all that he set out to accomplish against adversity simultaneously. And he stopped me in my tracks and just made me ponder the thought that a Florida boy who resides in Texas could come to Colorado. <laughs> you got to clap for that, darn it. <laughs> Tracy, my fiance, Constance, my daughter, Pretty Tony, the whole crew, Coach Hart, uh, Coach Kelly, Coach Mathis, all that guys, whoever up there. Let's, where's my son? Junior, stand up. Uh, yeah. He does all our social media, so all the stuff you've been seeing, that, that's him. The profanity is him as well. Is it? Where is, uh, where is Shador? Shador? And this is your quarterback, all right? He's going to have to earn it. Don't believe that. He's, He's going to have to earn it. The yeah, the quarterback's going to have to earn it. The safety made me mad, so I didn't bring him. His, <laughs> his brother. He's in my doghouse right now. <laughs> wow. Colorado, you showed up and you showed out. This is uh, unbelievable. It's funny how God always takes me to the unthinkable and, and provokes me to do the things that people wouldn't fathom doing. And I never would have thought it this time last year when I was laid up in the hospital dealing with these blood clots, getting two toes amputated and the sides of my legs cut out, that I would be in Colorado in this beautiful weather, this beautiful, um, this beautiful place, this beautiful city, which is virtually crime free with uh, over 36,000 students and a fan base, base that just won't stop. Don't you ever tell me nothing that God can't do because this is flat out incredible. God, this is incredible. As you know, I have work to finish in Jackson, Mississippi. They tell me we and O. Oh. That means we hadn't lost to anybody. We're and O. Oh. And we got to win this championship. But simultaneously, like I play baseball and football, I can multitask and I can focus. <laughs> and this is my job and my occupation and my business and my dream to bring you back to where you know you should belong. We're going to have one of the best coaching staffs assembled, some of the best scouts, some of the best kids that we're recruiting, and commitments already coming on the way as I speak. And now that I've gotten here and I see it, and I understand it, Rick, and I can grasp it, and I can touch it, and I can feel it, and I can taste it, I truly understand what you want. All you want is the opportunity to win to compete, to dominate, to be amongst the elite, to be amongst the best. And darn it, I'm going to give you that. We don't have to do anything. We're going to outwork them. We're going to outrecruit them. We're going to outscout them. We're going to outdevelop. We're going to get our education. We're going to graduate these young men. These young men are going to be on campus respectful and considerate and kind, opening the doors for you and making sure everything is copacetic. And they're going to say, yes, sir, and no, sir, and yes, ma'am, and no, ma'am, or they're going to have to deal with me. <laughs> That's just the way I father. That's the way I parent. That's the way I coach. I'm old school. I, I, sometimes I may look like an old fool, but I'm just old school. <laughs> Guys, after we get finished with this work, I just want you to know we're on the way. 
not to compete but to win, not to show up but to show out, not to be among the rest but to be the absolute best. Uh, we're coming to work, we're not coming to play, we're coming to kill, not to kick it. Baby, I got to believe that we're coming. You got to feel that energy inside of you that we're coming, don't you? You got to feel it that we're going to be there. You got to feel it when you get in that stadium. You better get in there early because time to kick off consumes. Baby, we're coming. Do you understand it? Do you feel that? Do you understand the intensity, the excitement, the adrenaline, the rush that I got right now that I can't wait till this thing kicks off because we are coming. Boulder, Colorado, you have no idea what you've blessed me with, the opportunity that you've given me, and I feel like I owe you. So every day I'm going to work for you. I'm going to strain for you. I'm going to develop for you. I'm going to commit for you. I'm going to do the things that others wouldn't do. Baby, we're coming. So anybody ask you something about when is he coming back, you say, I don't know, but I know he's coming. <laughs> Rick, thank you once again. Because there are several African-American head coaches around the country that were terminated and they were not replaced by African-American coach. But you had the audacity to do such a thing. Not only to do such a thing on this time, but several times you've done such a thing. So I thank you for your nerve. I thank you for your courage. I thank you for seeing past the color and the ethnicity and seeing the man with a plan to bring you back to the place of promise. Truly, my man. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. God, I thank you. I want you to get ready to start seeing cameras because we film documentaries. Matter of fact, we have our doc drops. What's the date? December 15th. And this is going to be part of it. So we have a documentary. So the kids, they want exposure. They want to be on television. They want the lights and the action. But they got to understand the same thing that causes you to shine will show your blemishes as well. So we're going to give them that. We're going to give them the followers. We're going to give them the attention. We're going to give them the love. We're going to give them the support. And we need each and every one of you. Because the caliber of players that we're getting ready to bring to you, they're going to want something. But guess what? I'm going to want something back. I'm not crazy about the NILs, but I understand the NILs. But I would rather our kids be focused on the NFL and not just the NIL. But if we have to do what we have to do to make sure they're comfortable, I want them to be comfortable. I don't want them to worry about anything. And from the complex in this facility that I've seen, shoot, I ain't worried about nothing but darn stuff. <laughs> Rick, I know you said I would bring the heat, but literally, we bringing the heat. Can somebody turn on the air around here? <laughs> darn it, I thought you said you had everything straight. Where's that? <laughs> uh, I digress, and I can't wait to see you amongst town and just shake your hand and look in your eye and tell you how much I, I thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, thank you, each and every one of you. This is a dream. This is a blessing. And we've only just begun. God bless. Thanks, Coach. Um, we'll take, we just have, as Dave said before, we have time for just a very few amount of questions. Uh, we're going to start with Brian Howell from the Bowler Daily Camera. Coach, nice to meet you. Uh, we know, uh, seeing the documentaries, the difference you've made in, in Jackson, Mississippi, what was it about the opportunity to come here and try to make a difference in a very different place that, that drew you to Colorado? The Bible says God uses the foolish things to confound the wise. And he's always taken me, taken me to unlikely places. You know, usually when you're great, I mean great at something. I mean really great at something. I was really great, you know? <laughs> I'm joking. You're going to understand my sense of humor now. <laughs> I kind of wasn't joking, though. I really was. <laughs> usually, you're a staple of that organization. And I had to think when I was a player, why would I have to play for five different football teams and four different Major League Baseball teams. It's because God took me from place to place and faith to faith and glory to glory to bring unity, to bring solvency, to bring peace, to bring joy, to bring happiness, to bring love to others. And that's the same darn reason I'm here now. Because he always used an unlikely person to 
do an unlikely thing. So I'm, I'm ready for the task, and I truly am thankful, and I can reiterate it a hundred times, you have no idea. Um, these last few years have been truly a blessing, but we learned a lot about life and a lot about people. Um, I'm not into politics, but I'm into people, and I'm pretty good with people. All right, next question, Pat Graham from the Associated Press. Hey, Coach Brian, I'll kind of echo off that question a little bit. Um, you've made a tremendous impact to the HBCUs. I, I guess how difficult was the decision to leave what you started there? Tremendous. Because it wasn't about the X's and O's or the wins and losses. It was about those kids. It was about looking at the faces of those kids, knowing that uh, I'm being ready God is getting ready to elevate me. I'm sorry. God is getting ready to elevate me. Usually a coach is terminated or elevated. Thank God I'm elevated. But still, the, the journey is not complete. Some of the things that we accomplished there about bringing understanding and notoriety to certain uh, falsities or uh, noncommittal things that are done at Power Fives, maybe God is using me to be the catalyst to make you think and to make you just fathom another way to, to make us feel unthreatened when someone of the other ethnicity is approaching, to just make us feel good about today. Maybe God is really using me to open doors at this level. The thing that alarms me the most is just because I'm leaving Jackson, they think that I'm leaving African American. I don't know if you noticed or not, but I'm black. <laughs> <laughs> I can never leave who I am and what I am and how I am and how I go about being that. So it is still my task to look in that locker room and see 65 to 70 percent of African American men trying to help them get to the next level, as well as all the others. My calling is for young men, young women, and people of all walks of life, all social climates, and all ethnicities. That's my calling. My colleague is not built on a location. It's built on a destination. Now, that was good. You're supposed to clap for that. <laughs> Shoot. Darn it. That was good. You give me some of my good stuff. We just, we just getting started. I already went in the bag, baby. Let's go. All right. Next question is Adam Munster Tiger from 247. Hi, Coach. Welcome to Boulder. I'm just curious. I know you've only been here for about 14 hours. Yeah. Has anything surprised you about Colorado been different than your perception coming out here? Yes, I've been checking the weather every day. <laughs> <laughs> and it is beautiful. It is beautiful outside. And uh, just things that blesses my heart. Like when we landed last night after I spoke to our team and just hearing fans at the airport. And those fans, I think they journeyed over here and my son and my family, my lady and all us, we, we and coaches, we walked on the field just to get a feel for it. And my foot was about to burst. It was throbbing like crazy. And my son, just to see him walk around out there, you know, and my daughter was, was going to be a basketball player. She's played basketball for Jackson State. Yes. Yeah. Just to see them meander around this beautiful complex and on the field, it just it, it brought tears to my eyes, man. So those type of things, just the, the welcome and the hospitality and the love and the respect and the appreciation. And Rick's wife has done a wonderful job, too. I don't know about Rick. She's outdone Rick. <laughs> but I'm a little upset. She's, she's talking to my lady about shopping, and that's, I, we, we got to stop that right now. <laughs> this place ain't cheap. I do know that. <laughs> All right, next question is Nikki Edwards from Rivals. Hi, Coach. Nice to meet you. How you doing? Good. Um, how would you define your coaching style, and how can CU fans get a sense of well, how you approach time. the game? I'm 55, baby. I can't remember. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do the first question. How would you define your coaching style? My coaching style is prominent, like those boots and those jackets. You see how you took your time and meticulous put that together? <laughs> Meticulously? Yes, I am. Um, I dot eyes, cross T's. I don't miss nothing. I'm an early guy. You know, I'm up at four o'clock in the morning. I'm in. I'm, I, I'm not gonna tell you what time I get to work because you don't want you waiting on me out here. But <laughs> I, I work my butt off to to make sure what you see on Saturdays are perfected and they're profound and they make a statement. Um, next question. I forgot the next one because I'm old. 
How can CU fans get? <laughs> how can CU fans get a sense of how you approach the game before you take the field? Before I approach the field, oh my God, that's good. It's a little different. Um, just me and her to our social media uh, with, with Jackson. You'll understand how we do things. We do things a little different because I want our kids in a relaxed atmosphere and I want them to have fun. But it's hard to have fun when you're not winning. So we're going to create a winning atmosphere. That's number one. We're going to get the kids and the young men in here as well as the coaches and the staffers in here that are committed to excellence, that are committed to winning, that, that you don't even fathom the word lose, that you, you, everything you do is to dominate and to be successful. Um, I love what I do, and I do what I love. You're going to see that on the wall somewhere. All my sayings, all my quotes, you're going to see that stuff because that's how I live, and that's what I embody. And it's genuine. I don't make this stuff up. I can't. I'm not that smart. I do not make this stuff up. This stuff is in me, and it, it, it just pours out of me when I have the opportunity to, to speak to a, a young person or to try to uplift the young man. I love this, and I cannot wait to put it on display. Next question, Sean Keeler from the Denver Post. Good afternoon, Coach Prime. I'm, you mentioned Rick being like a brother from another mother. Mm. Uh, uh, words to that effect. What, what was the first thing he said? You remember that first conversation, what that was like? What made you think? He was trying to feel me out. Yeah, I'm he calling that guy mean? back. He was, oh, trying, to, he was trying to feel You're me out. You were watching the Cowboy Packer game. He was trying to feel me <laughs> out. <laughs> no, it was a phone call. Yeah, that's right. See, I see I, that. yeah, that's what I'm saying. Details, baby. <laughs> It was a phone call, but it was quick. It was expeditious. He, he didn't want to elongate the, the conversation. He just wanted to feel me, to see was there interest, and certainly there was interest. But I was more interested in him than the opportunity because he was going to tell me about the opportunity eventually, but I wanted to know who he was. And I didn't have to do homework and Google or anything like that. It just after several conversations, and he's slick too. He's slick, God, he's slick. <laughs> Getting ready to go play a darn game, and I, I check my phone, and it's a picture of this beautiful stadium. Just checking on you, have a good game. Man, come on. <laughs> <laughs> Next week, snow is on the field, but it's gonna melt within an hour. Send your picture in. <laughs> Just, just, he was very strategic and profound. He, he's, I, I see why you guys been together that long. He's good, isn't he? He's good. Yeah, he's good. You're good, man. You really are. So it was very strategic. <laughs> Next question, Ariel Arsudu from Channel 9. Hi, Coach. Great to meet you. Just talking around the room, the buzz is as electric as it was back at the national championship game. I mean, does that bring you kind of any any worry to live up to that? Do Just, I look like a man that worries about anything? Not at all. <laughs> Did no. you see the way I walked in here? Did you see the swagger that was with me? <laughs> worry? Baby, I'm too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> yeah, come on, I'm too damn blessed <laughs> to be stressed. I've never been one for peer pressure. I put pressure on peers. I've never been one to worry. I make people worry. I, I, don't, I don't get down like that. I'm too darn confident. And you've heard me in this quote many times. That's my natural, natural odor. I don't even work alone. That's confidence I'm, I'm wearing right now. I don't worry because I know the resources and the staff that we're afforded here. And I know the work ethic that we have. And I trust the Bible says that Rod and that staff, they comfort me. This staff is going to comfort the heck out of me. And we're going to be good. We're really going to be good. I do not worry. You need to worry about getting a spot in here the next time we do this, because there's going to be more cameras than this. That's the worry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, let's go, baby. I love, <laughs> I love it. All right, next question, Eric Christensen from KCNC. So, uh, hey, Coach Prime, how you doing? How you doing, sir? I'm doing well. So, um, similar to that question, but the fans last night, I was out here following you around and talked to some fans, and their expectations are sky high. What are your expectations for this place? Much higher than them. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because I've been there. They hadn't been there. Uh, I've been to the mountaintop, and, and they hadn't been there. Um, I know they want to go there, and I want them to go there, but I want us to go there together. 
So my expectations exceed all. Um, Shoot, we, we had the game handily last night, and I was going off because we were letting them score. We don't – what's our stats, Hart, defensive, where we ranked? Number one. Number one in, uh, the How many points we give up? 131 points. Yeah, so when someone scored – how many did they score last night? 24. Yeah, what, how did that happen, by the way? <laughs> See, that's the kind of stuff I get upset with. Like, how did that happen? We've given up 100-some points in 12 games, and they scored 24. I don't understand that stuff like that. But we got the job done. We, we, we got the job done. And I was just really, during that game, just thinking about those kids, just thinking about their faces. That's all. All right, this is the last question. Tyler King. I'm having a good that... time, and this is the last question. <laughs> so. Keep going. Hey, Coach, Tyler King with the Denver Gazette. Nice to meet you. Um, just curious, you mentioned it in your opening statement about, you know, Coach George or Rick George, you know, bringing in multiple black head coaches in a row. How much was, how important was that to you when you were looking at this job that you would be the third consecutive in the first school to ever do that? Not, none whatsoever. That had no bearing on me um, whatsoever. I'm thankful and I'm appreciative that he's that kind of man that he see past the ethnicities. But I was really focused on the man and the opportunity and what we could do. This is a wonderful situation. This city is darn believable. It really is. It's beautiful. Um, although I've only been to a few places, um, but it's, it's beautiful. So just seeing and understanding the expectation of that stadium selling out, and you guys are going to do it because I trust you like that. You guys are going to sell that out. And just to see that and to envision that, it's unbelievable. I, I can't wait. And uh, everything he said, the half hadn't been told. He, he, he tried his best to articulate it and describe it as eloquently as he could. And he's a very articulate and eloquent man. But he still didn't do it any justice to what we saw last night and what we're seeing right here. You need to give your darn selves a hand because this is beautiful. This is, this is beautiful. This is beautiful. <laughs> this is a beautiful thing. And we need to stay together. We need to stay united. We need to continuously believe. It may not happen as quick as you may desire it to, but it's going to happen. We're going to win. It's, it's going to happen. I'm not going to put a timetable on it, but it's going to happen. I didn't put a timetable on the Jackson, but it happened. I didn't put a timetable on change, but things change. I didn't put a timetable on some of the things that we have accomplished, but we've accomplished things that I had no idea about. Every time we stepped on the field, it seemed like it was a different record being broken. And I had no idea about it. Um, last night we were winning. They came and told me, well, Shador need two more completions for a darn record, a completion record. I said, well, give them two jet sweeps. Let's get this junk over with so we can come on, man. Let's get this game over with. <laughs> a jet sweep is when you pitch the ball to the guy. It's hard to miss him, OK? <laughs> <laughs> and it counts as a completion. <laughs> right, son? <laughs> last question. Any other questions? Jake, do you want a question? Jake from DNBR. You're looking good, too, my man. You're looking dapper. Oh, thank you. <laughs> hey, Coach Prime, good to meet you. I was just wondering if, uh, since you're in Colorado now, is Rob Jay going to be able to roll with you to the Broncos oh, game? Oh, my God. If I tell Rob Jay that, he's going to he, – he tried to sneak on the plane, trust me. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's quite a few people trying to sneak on the plane. Um, honestly, let me tell you something about the hearts of these men. Um, they suggested that some type of way we involve – Jackson State and students or something to uplift and promote and uh, provide a, a, a mean and a way of greater understanding. I'm trying to put that as politely as possible. But that's the character of these men and these people here at this wonderful institution. They don't have to do that. That didn't come with the package. But for them to say, you know what? We need to reach back and help some folks. I love it. I absolutely love it. So when you start telling what transpired today, make sure you tell that. Because that's the character of these wonderful people of this prestigious university. And I love that 100%. Hey, thank you all. I can't wait to see you. I love you. God bless you.